Hey everyone, this is Dr. Yu. Today we're going to finish the last part of micromolecules. So we're going to look at nucleic acids. Now, there are many molecules that are nucleic acids. So here I'm just going to introduce three main ones. We have a DNA. That's probably something that everybody is very familiar with. We know the DNA is the genetic material. We also have RNA. Um, RNA is a little bit different than DNA. You can tell from the name, right? DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. So that's how you know the name DNA comes from, right? You take the first letter, so you have D, then from nucleic, and then A from acid. RNA is slightly different, right? So you can uh, compare the name. You probably notice that RNA is missing that deoxy part, right? So for RNA, it's really oops, just ribonucleic acid, so RNA. And then we'll talk about why the names are different, right? So what, what exactly is different between DNA and RNA? And the third common type of nucleic acids you probably see is ATP. We have talked about ATP before because it's a very important energy molecule. We use ATP as the energy currency. And really, I think of ATP as a battery, a rechargeable battery. So you can store excess energy in ATP. Uh, when the cells need energy, the cells can just break down ATP. Right? When the chemical bonds in ATP molecules are broken, energy is released, and cells can use that energy to perform different functions. Now, the general functions for nucleic acids are storage, transmission, and use of genetic information, right? That's understandable. Storage of genetic information is really about DNA, right? DNA is the genetic blueprint. Transmission, use of genetic information, this is more about RNA. If you have taken the biology class before, uh, and if you have learned about transcription, translation, you know that RNA performs a very critical role in those two processes. Now for DNA, RNA, they are long chains. So they're chains. Now, normally DNA molecules are much, much longer than RNA molecules. And DNA, RNA are considered polymers, right? Because they're made up of repeated subunits or monomers. And the monomers are called nucleotide. Nucleotide. So when you look at a, a DNA chain, you can see that there are probably hundreds of thousands of these nucleotides all joined together, right, to form the DNA strand. Right? So each of these subunits is a nucleotide. So you need to remember that. And that's the same for RNA as well. So RNA strands are made up of these nucleotides. All right, now the diagram I show here really is just kind of to give you a general idea of what DNA looks like. So DNA has this typical double helical structure. Right? So DNA is double-stranded. As you can see, you know, there are two strands. So that's one strand and that's the other strand. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bond. So the hydrogen bond is formed between the, between the two strands. You can see this is one strand, right? This is another strand. And this is just a one nucleotide of the strand. Think of them as the monomers, right? So the hydrogen bond is formed between these two nucleotides, right? From the two different strands. And that's, what, uh, that's what's holding the two strands together. So that forms this kind of double helical structure, which is typical for DNA. Okay, now let's look at the structure of each nucleotide, each monomer, more closely. So there are three components in each nucleotide. The first component is phosphate. I'm going to go from the, the simple one to the more complex one. Phosphate, you have seen this before, right? PO4, that's the phosphate group. There's not too much uh, information about phosphate group. It does carry negative charge. So this makes DNA negatively charged. So when you look at DNA molecule as a whole, DNA molecules are usually negatively charged. All right, now the second component is this middle structure, which is a sugar. Now we talk about sugars when we talk about carbohydrates, right? So sugars are carbohydrates, usually they're smaller carbohydrates. 
So the sugar component is different between DNA and RNA. So I put the information over here. In RNA, it's a ribose, right? ribose. Now remember the suffix O-S-E usually indicates the type of sugar. We talk about lactose, right, which is the milk sugar. It's a disaccharide. We also talk about maltose, which is also a disaccharide, and glucose, which you know really well, it's a monosaccharide, right? And in DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. So you can see there is this kind of deoxy part right, in DNA. The, the deoxy means there's no oxygen. So when you look at this sugar structure, this is the sugar in DNA. So this is a deoxyribose. So the deoxyribose, it's a hydrogen atom connected to the carbon here. Now, a lot of times they don't really show the hydrogen. They just kind of skip it. But you know that there's a hydrogen here. And this is a carbon, which is not indicated either. So this is deoxyribose, right? Over here, there's no oxygen, only a hydrogen. But if you replace this hydrogen with a hydroxyl group, which is OH, then this becomes ribose. And the nucleotide over here is going to be a nucleotide found in RNA. Okay. So you can see, uh, again, right in ribose, there's oxygen because this is a hydroxyl group attached to carbon. But in DNA, instead of the hydroxyl group, you only have the hydrogen, right? It's missing the oxygen. So that's why in DNA, it's deoxyribose. So that's one of the major differences between DNA and RNA. Okay, now the third component is this nitrogenous phase. Now, this is probably the most important part in each nucleotide because this nitrogenous phase provides the basis for genetic information that varies between individuals. So there are two groups of nitrogenous bases. We divide them to purines and pyrimidines. Adenine, which is A, and guanine, which is G, those are purines. And the thymine, T, and the cytosine, C, those are pyrimidines. Now, these are the four bases that you will see in DNA. Now, in RNA, there are also four different bases. But the T, thymine, is replaced by uracil. So when you see letter U, you know you are looking at RNA sequence. If you see letter T, that means you're looking at a DNA sequence. Right? So in RNA, you have A, G, C. So all those three are the same, but you're going to have U instead of T. So that's another difference between DNA and RNA. Okay, now let's look at sequences. The sequences are really based on the different bases, right? So a sequence of A, G, G, C is going to be different than A, C, G, C. Those are two different sequences. Of course, they're too short. Um, so this is just kind of for demonstration purpose. Um, so you can see those four bases can you know, form different DNA sequences. Okay, now let's look at the differences between DNA and RNA. We have mentioned a couple major differences. Um, and just to kind of give you a better idea, I made a table and I listed um, the major differences in this table, including the location, DNA can only be found in the nucleus, right? Uh, now, you may find the DNA in mitochondria as well because mitochondria do contain the genetic material. Um, but for simplicity, and I don't think T's is going to go that in depth. So we're just going to say DNA is normally found in the nucleus. DNA molecules are too big, so they cannot get out of the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus has a nuclear membrane. And in these nuclear membranes, there are little pores. Let me redraw it. So you can see there are some openings, right? Those are nuclear pores. So RNA molecules are much smaller. So RNA, like a messenger RNA, can get out of the nucleus. But for DNA, which is part of the chromosome, they're just too big to uh, leave the nucleus. RNA can be found 
in the cytoplasm, right? Like I said, the RNA can exit the nucleus, right? And then deliver the genetic information to ribosomes. So they, ribosomes, so they can be found uh, in cytoplasm usually. Sugar, our DNA has deoxyribose sugar. RNA, the oxygen is there, right? Attached to the carbon. So it's a ribose. Bases, we talk about the differences, right? So you have to remember that it's going to be T, thymine in DNA, but your cell U in RNA. Okay, I had to kind of stop for a second to fix a typo. So DNA is double-stranded, right? It has two strands, whereas in RNA, there's only one strand. Function DNA stores genetic material, right? but RNA can perform a, a wider range of functions. So it can carry out transcription, it copies the information from DNA to messenger RNA, and then the messenger RNA can deliver information to ribosomes and direct the, the synthesis of proteins. And some of the regulatory RNA molecules can regulate gene expression. It can affect transcription, for example, to increase or decrease the expression of a particular gene. Okay, now for RNA, there are three types of RNAs. Uh, now, there are other types of RNAs, but again, for Ts for this level, I, I don't think we need to worry about those. So we're just going to look at the more common ones. First, a messenger RNA. Uh, it's, messenger RNA is basically a transcript of DNA, right? So you're copying the information from DNA to mRNA. And then mRNA gets out of the nucleus, as I talk about over here, and then it's going to deliver the information to ribosomes, right? And then ribosomes are going to use the information in mRNA. Basically, you know, ribosomes use mRNA as a template and use that template to synthesize proteins. Now, talking about ribosomes, part of the uh, ribosome is a ribosomal RNA, which is rRNA. RRNA. And then the last one, tRNA, T stands for transfer. So transfer RNA molecules are kind of like trucks. They transport amino acids to ribosomes uh, for protein synthesis, right? Ribosomes need raw material to make proteins. And these raw material materials are going to be the monomers of proteins, right? And then protein monomers are amino acids. Okay, now the next topic is about DNA, gene, and chromosome. But I'm going to save this for later lessons because um, there is a lesson that's specifically for this topic. Um, what is DNA? What is gene? What is chromosome? What is the relationship between the three? So I'm going to save this for later. All right, now gene sequence. So we touch on this a little bit. Gene sequence is really a nucleotide sequence because the bases are different, right? So DNA is going to have four different kinds of nucleotides, right? It's going to have adenine nucleotide, guanine nucleotide, thymine nucleotide, and cytosine nucleotide, right? Uh, and again, these different nucleotides could make various uh, sequences. The nucleotide sequence is used to direct the protein synthesis. The nucleotide sequence determines the protein that the gene codes for. Mutations could change the nucleotide sequence or the gene sequence, which can lead to changes in the protein structure. And we often say structure determines function. Right? So once the protein structure is changed, then the function of the protein could also be changed. Okay, now let's look at some practice problems for the entire lesson. Number one, which of the following molecule, micromolecules contain the majority of enzymes that catalyze chemical reactions critical to life? Most of the enzymes are proteins. So the correct answer is C. Number two, if you add proteases to a protein shake and wait for some time for the chemical reactions to take place, what new substances do you expect to find that are not in the original protein shake? So to answer this question, first you need to recognize what proteinases are. So words with a suffix of A-S-E usually indicate that this is some kind of enzyme. Right? And protease 
is similar to the word protein, right? So proteinases are enzymes that can break down proteins. Talk about this word with, uh, or in the digestive system. So when you apply these enzymes to a protein shake, which is rich in proteins, the protein molecules are going to be broken down, right? So the enzymes will break down these protein molecules to their monomers, right? To their building blocks. So what are the building blocks for protein molecules? Amino acids, right? So amino acids will start to appear in the protein shake. Number three, candy and other sweet food items are likely to have a great amount of sweet, right? So there are probably a lot of simple sugars in those food items. And simple sugars are carbohydrates, right? Monosaccharides, disaccharides, uh, most of them are, are sweet, right? Like glucose, fructose. All right, guys, we finally finished micromolecules lesson. I know this has taken a long time because there are four groups of micromolecules, but we finished it. Good job, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson.